know when we spoke last time, the redundancies still seem quite raw, I think. But yep. now it seems you really turn it into a bit of a positive, maybe, or does the feeling of being made redundant still linger in a way? Uh, I'd say it's uh, it's now sort of 99% positive. Brilliant. Uh, so uh, obviously not knowing up until that moment that uh, this was going to happen, it's obviously a bit of a shock when you get told. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, you have to go through the whole process in terms of, you know, uh, accepting what's happened, you know, reflecting on, uh, you know, the time you've had, uh, you know, reflecting on all the friendships and connections that you've made and realizing that, you know, a lot of the things that you did, like I just, you know, talked about in terms of my routine, I'm not going to be part of your life uh, going forward. Uh, and I've got a positive outlook anyway. Uh, so I've throughout the process, I'd say I was always leaning more optimistically in terms of, you know, this is a good thing, this is a good thing. Right. And over the last few weeks, it's been reinforced more, you know, both through, you know, me going through that whole process and through, you know, the support networks that I have, you know, whether it's friends and professional connections that I've, uh, I've made and, you know, people I've been meeting and talking to about my next opportunities. It's, it's you know, that constant theme about, if you look at it as a positive, it will be a positive. And it's an opportunity to, to reset and, and really think about, you know, uh, what you want to do in the future. And it's, in a way, it's almost a privilege uh, that, you know, you don't realize it, uh, that you, you, you have that, but it is, uh, you know, a privilege that I have to be able to, you know, sit back, take my time about uh, what my next uh, opportunity is, you know, spend more time with my family, spend more time you know working on uh, the house and spend more know, time on yourself yeah spend more time on myself so the these opportunities are, are quite rare nowadays in this you know uh, everything's go 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 all the time so it's nice to um to take a step back nice and going forward would you want to be defined by your work or are you uh, looking to create a new identity that's more reflective of you? I wouldn't say I want to create a new identity. I think uh, I just hadn't taken the time to think about it uh, in, in such a, I guess, analytical way. Um, analytical really, way. Wow. Even well, yeah. interesting. Yeah, you really break down all the aspects of, you know, your, your identity. And for me, it's, it's a bit like... Uh, you know, the layers of an onion. All of them are kind of the same in a way, but uh, the closer you get to the heart in terms of the closer you get to your true individual self, that's where you really see your identity. So there's different layers, you know, you can go as wide as- It's so identity. deep. I like it. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's that deep, but it's, it's, it's fairly obvious when, I'm, uh, you know, when, when I elaborate on it a little bit in terms mm. of, you know, people derive their identity from a number of different things. And it can be from, you know, something like your nationality, your race, the language you speak, you know, all the way down to, you know, the schools you went to, the, uh, uh, the places you hang out, the music you like, and then even closer in terms of your, your own family values uh, and, you know, uh, the, the, the friends that you have. And then there's also the inner self, you know, the things that motivate you as a person, uh, your fears, your hopes, your dreams, those mm. kinds of things that define you individually. But, you know, all those different layers, you know, like concentric circles, like they're all part of you. But, you know, we pick and choose really which ones we attach ourselves to more. Mm. So, you know, you, you see it uh, pretty much everywhere. People you know, uh, not just don't necessarily think about it, but all those are, you know, layers of who we are and everyone's, you know, uh, a really complex person. When you really break it down, like when you really spend time talking to, to, to people as individuals, like they, all the experiences we've had are, are part of who we are. So Very you well really said. think about it, yeah. And what's interesting is that perhaps if you weren't made redundant you wouldn't have thought about this in a way would you or like it seems 
quite a bit of an epiphany in a way. Uh, I'd say a lot of it has happened in uh, probably the last six months. So before the redundancy even. So COVID was a big, big change to, uh, to, to our lives, really. Uh, and to our routine. Monumental shift. It was a big shift. It was everybody went through the same thing. Uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, had, you know, health problems, died, and a lot of people lost their jobs. And, but it forced everyone to, to change something about their lives. And I think through that, uh, I basically started thinking about, you know, a lot of things. Is this, you know, what I wanted to continue doing? Um, mm. And, you know, it was, it was amazing how adaptable a lot of people are, actually. I was surprised we coped that well overall. So it was, uh, it was when I really started thinking about it. Uh, and I guess I had more time now to really think about it and articulate it. Uh, and like I said, I've uh, got a partner that's gone that uh, I can now uh, really think about why was it such a big part of, you know, uh, of, what I, of how I identify myself. So what's interesting is that in the past couple of years with COVID, were you always thinking about perhaps making a change and not, not creating a new identity, like you said, but perhaps taking it to another level because you felt, I want to say stuck. I know we had prior conversations before about your mm -hmm. role. Maybe the redundancy wasn't as a surprise, perhaps, or... Uh, yeah, when I think about it, it, wa it, it wasn't a surprise. It, uh, the timing might have been a surprise, but it wasn't really in terms of, you know, things that have been uh, going in that direction for, for a little while. And in terms of uh, the career progression that I was after was different to what uh, the direction that the team and the company was going in. So those things were obvious and it was just about what was going to be done about it. Interesting. Uh, and, you know, I could feel that. So I had, you know, thoughts about, you know, uh, moving. So, you know, interviewing somewhere else and, and so on. But when you're in a, a job that's, you know, pretty comfortable, you like the people that you work with, it's, uh, you don't dedicate as much time and effort to, to going elsewhere. It's so comfortable. It's, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. I wouldn't say I was happy, but I was comfortable. So that uh, has forced me to, uh, to go out there and actually do something about that uh, part of uh, my career. Uh, but also on the side, I'd been, you know, exploring uh, other avenues, you know, whether it was starting a business, uh, you know, or, or, or volunteering or helping uh, people with their businesses. So I've been doing little bits on the side and I've been, you know, working on uh, a business with uh, a friend. Nice. He's, uh, so I'm basically volunteering my time to, to help out with this business, but it's an idea that I really uh, connect with and it's helped me explore and develop a, a skill set that I, I didn't know I, I, uh, I had really. So I love that yeah. nice smile when you, when you talked about it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's allowing me to think more creatively. Lovely. Uh, I think Brilliant. I'm out of the box, yeah. And because you and I know that not every experience has that silver lining at times, doesn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, I think um, experiences are definitely, um, yeah, uh, both positive and negative. Uh, and I think you, you, you just kind of have to, you know, process it and, and, and try and take positives out of as many situations as you can, but that's not always uh, possible. But, you know. During that six-week period, did you feel uncomfortable talking? To, you know how you, you mentioned before that basically whenever new, two new people meet, inevitably the question comes out, so what do you do? <laughs> uh, I, I think it's, it's actually uh, helped in a, in a lot of ways because it's, uh, it's provided a point of difference and a point of interest uh, that's made 
uh, a conversation like that more meaningful and uh, more memorable. Because I think, you know, how many times you talk to someone and, you know, they say, oh, I'm, you know, I work in real estate or whatever. And then you just continue. You just continue the path. You ask the next question. Do you have any kids? Are you married? That kind of thing. Like, whereas when you say something that's unexpected as a response, you pause and you reflect and you discuss that topic. So, you know, I've had everything from, you know, uh, people really taking a deep interest in terms of, oh, they made you redundant. Oh, that sounds so terrible. Why? Well, how does that work? You know, uh, and, and so on. And, and especially people who don't work in, I guess, the finance industry. It probably works quite differently in other industries, as I've uh, found out now. Mm. Uh, so the process is, is quite different. So for me, it, it was a very, I guess, amicable, if you can call a situation like that. Uh, it was like an amicable divorce. So it, it's explaining that to people uh, and then talking about, you know, the process uh, and the uh, things that I've uh, gone through uh, was one was very, very good for me because it normalized it a lot. And you, didn't, two, you didn't keep it in? No, I didn't keep it in. Discussed all sorts of angles. Like I said, a lot of people was one from shock and uh, other people were like, oh, that's a really good thing. Uh, I know it happened to someone or it's happened to me before. And people share bits of themselves uh, that are helpful. And all of those have helped make it like a very normal thing rather than me sitting at home and avoiding talking to people and not having some of those questions that I haven't asked myself, you know, how did I feel about uh, about that? Do you feel like you could have done something different to keep your job? Did I want to do something different to keep my job? All those things that, you know, uh, you might not think of asking mm. yourself, other people ask you and, and it kind of forces you to, Interesting. Uh, to go through that. So what was the most profound question you got when someone asked about your recent experience? Because as you, as you could imagine, there are a lot of questions which are very run in the mill. Why did it happen? When did it happen? How could they? This is fantastic. It's very positive, right? Mm -hmm. It's the spectrum, right? So was there one profound question that you received about it which really got you thinking? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. I wouldn't say there's been a, 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 a profound question, but uh, one person uh, basically, uh, I would say, psychoanalyze me. Psychoanalyze you? Yeah. Okay, okay. Pretty much on the spot. He's like, well, the way you're talking about it, it sounds like this is something you were thinking about and were... Uh, prepared for because if you're saying it happened you know two weeks ago it was a two weeks uh, after the event when, uh, when I was speaking to this person sounds like you've really really uh, uh, processed this uh, well and so what are you going to do now and like but the way he sort of summarized the feeling I had at that time was was I guess pretty pretty accurate and this was, you know, uh, two minutes into the conversation. So this is not someone I know very well. I want to meet maybe once every six months. Uh, mm. So the way he just basically just said, hang on, I'm observing you. I'm listening to the words that you're saying, listen to how you're talking about it. It sounds like you're at peace with it. Two, even two weeks after the event. Mm. Yes. Is that a testament to the fact that, like what you and I talked about, you could sort of see it coming in a way? Because yeah. even you're for yourself, you felt you were comfortable. Yeah. Challenge it or, or whatnot, you could argue, but yeah. you always wanted to maybe get out. And what's interesting is that an opportunity presented itself. Yeah. You took it. Yeah and utilizing your mind of analyzing and being that rational yourself the pros, the pros sorry clearly outweighed yeah any negative exactly. consequences yeah interesting and like what we talked about 
if you weren't really expecting it at all, this conversation may may have gone a different path. I think so. Because uh, I've seen and observed other people in the team that it's happened to. And, uh, you know, the, the reactions were, you know, arranged. And some of them were shocked to me as well. So uh, it was maybe those experiences or seeing it happen to, to other people in the in the company kind of planted the seed that that's a possibility uh for for, for me as well oh you mean sort of the rumor mill in a way oh uh, not necessarily the rumor mill but the fact that you know uh it, it's around the corner for for a lot of people uh, Got it. it's just it's just uh you know steal yourself or prepare yourself or something like that Interesting. That was even before I had my situation at work change. So as well, things are still going well in terms of, you know, the progression that I was receiving and the uh, direction that we were both going in was, you know, aligned. 